But Rachel Mitchell uh, wrote a letter uh, that, that we all got a hold of last night uh, talking about how Dr. Ford, despite the feelings that so many feel for her testimony, but Dr. Ford said that evidence doesn't support claims against Kavanaugh. And, and let me ask you about that, because those uh, that I did speak to this weekend that questioned Dr. Ford's uh, testimony just kept going back to the same thing that probably prosecutors would go back to, which is, you know, that everybody that she mentioned at the scene uh, said it didn't happen. Uh, and it wasn't just because they were intimidated by Brett Kavanaugh, even her longtime friend, uh, who she claims was there with her, said she wasn't there with her. Uh, that's certainly something that, uh, that Rachel Mitchell uh, seized on. I'm curious what you thought about Rachel Mitchell's conclusion and what you think as a prosecutor generally about Dr. Ford's story uh, three, four days after uh, the testimony. Yeah, the issue isn't so much Rachel Mitchell's conclusion as it is to the question and the premise. There is either a, an unintentional or a deliberate effort to frame this as a criminal prosecution, when in fact it is not. It is much more akin to a job interview. In a criminal prosecution, the standard is guilt be, beyond a reasonable doubt and uh, a presumption right. of innocence. And, and by that standard, she's <laughs> right. You could not prove a case here. Others have said you couldn't get a warrant because there's no probable cause here. That may be true, but that's not the issue. The issue is, is this the person that you want to put on our U.S. Supreme Court? If these allegations had come up earlier, before he had been nominated, I am certain he never would have been nominated because you would say, even if this isn't true, if it's just a credible allegation, we don't need that distraction. We've got this long list of potential <coughs> candidates. Let's right. put one of them on the court. Instead, we're locked in this spot where, uh, regardless of what happens, if he's on or he's off, there's going to be these bad feelings, as you talked about. But I think if he's on, it, it, it could besmirch the court. You talk about Brett Kavanaugh being too big to fail. I think my, the counterpoint to that is the court is too big to ruin. And so there's right, a long but, but list of conservative you, you, you judges just, who could take you, his place. Right. You just said, though, even if this is not true, but that's what we're trying to get to the, the, the bottom of, even if this is not true. And I agree with you. I, I actually think that if you just look at that moment where he was with uh, Senator Klobuchar and uh, the, the, the poor temperament that he showed there, uh, there were a couple of other moments, too, where it does not seem that he was being honest and straightforward about some some very simple, some very basic things about getting into Yale and not having any connections there, and he, some of the terms that he tried to uh, uh, tried to put different meanings to. Um, yeah, some some real concerns are raised there. But the FBI is trying to get as much information about what happened and what did not happen. It does matter, doesn't it, a great deal uh, about uh, whether anybody can figure out whether this happened or not. Well, if, if we are going to persist in the nomination of Rhett Kavanaugh and not withdraw his name for these other reasons, including those that you mentioned, then yes, I guess it, it does matter. I think if the Senate is going to make a decision, and I think a big part of it is, um, you know, millions of women are watching and saying, if this is true, does it matter? And so figuring out whether it's true is the, is the first step in that. It's concerning it, that, as Frank says, uh, the FBI is, uh, is feeling handcuffed in this instance. One would hope that even if they've been given an initial list of witnesses, that they'd be <coughs> Be permitted to go back and get permission to follow any leads that may emerge from there. I mean, if they talk to the people who were present at the scene and say, you know who else was present at the scene uh, is, is person X, that they'd be permitted to talk to person X. Um, that's a very important thing. So I am hopeful that that list of four or whatever it is is only an initial list and that they'd be permitted to uh, conduct any necessary follow-up uh, investigation that they have to. Ordinarily, the FBI isn't told right. who you get to talk to. They're given a topic and, and they're permitted to have free reign uh, to decide who they need to talk to to feel that they have fully investigated that topic. So, Hallie, what can you tell us about uh, the president's attitude towards this FBI investigation? Obviously, this weekend when Democrats were complaining, he tweeted out that he wanted the FBI to do you know, whatever the FBI right. wanted to do, follow whatever leads you wanted to follow. Uh, that also, uh, Sarah Sanders, I, I believe, repeated that claim. Other administration officials did. But then uh, we heard senior 
uh, administration officials saying that, in fact, it is more limited. Uh, what can you tell us? Uh, what insights can you give us about what the truth is? So here's where I think we are this morning, Joe. The president, you're right, and his administration, his White House is saying, hey, free reign. That seems to be the word of the day. Let the FBI do whatever they want. Now, the president has tweeted that. He has said it out loud, but that has not apparently trickled down to the rest of, uh, of, of the folks who are actually looking into this. A senior U.S. official and another source is telling NBC News that the FBI has not received any kind of updated instructive instructions rather from the White House. So uh, at this point, there are still questions about what this limited scope means, and that's why Senator Dianne Feinstein has written this letter to Dom McGahn, the White House counsel, to FBI Director Christopher Wray, saying, we need more information. I want a copy of what exactly you are supposed to be doing and what you think your mission is so that we know as well. Barbara said something that struck me as well. She said, if this Kavanaugh nomination moves forward. Let me tell you this, Joe. Based on my reporting, there's no if in the mind of the president. There's no if in the eyes of the White House. There is not a backup plan here. Multiple sources have told me over the last four days or so that it's not like the president is sitting around going, all right, let's toss around some names. Who could some backups be? That those conversations really have not happened. Now, that said, remember, he just fairly recently this summer nominated Brett Kavanaugh and went through the interview process with other candidates. So it's not like it's stale in his mind. It's still fairly fresh. But it is notable that uh, you do not have the White House counsel, Don McGahn. You don't have the folks who are involved in the judiciary sitting there coming up with names as a backup. They are all in on Brett yeah. Kavanaugh. All of their eggs are in the Kavanaugh basket. They think this thing's going forward and, and, and he's going to end up on the court. All right, Hallie Jackson, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate you being here. Uh, and John Heilman, I, first of all, if, if you're in the position of Donald Trump or the position of somebody in the White House, what do you say? There is no backup plan. Correct. That puts, more, that puts more pressure on Susan Collins. That puts more pressure on Murkowski. That puts more pressure on every Republican flake that's wavering to basically say, listen, here's the deal. We can have a conservative court if you pick Kavanaugh, but if you don't pick Kavanaugh, we're going to be tied four to four until after the 2020 election. So I don't I, I, I that's a very compelling argument. I don't believe it for a second. What about you? Well, uh, look, I, I, it's not clear that there's time, at least between now and the midterms, for there to be. You, there was another a possibility right there. You, they could put another name up. But right now, it seems to me, in addition to the point you're making, Joe, which is that, uh, of course, you say there's no backup. Uh, on top of that, I think the White House is starting to recognize that the politics of this uh, are playing to its favor, that if Judge Kavanaugh were to go down, the, much of the Republican base, if you believe that this is a base mobilization election, that the only hope the Republicans have is to motivate the Trump base to turn out in large numbers, that right now Judge Kavanaugh and what they perceive as his unfair treatment in this process is a motivating factor. Uh, the court helped right. uh, Donald Trump in 2016, the campaign for the court, and the court could help him again in this context. So in some sense, the, the, the politics of this, whether Judge Kavanaugh gets confirmed or not, uh, sticking with Judge Kavanaugh is an important base motiva motivation strategy. But I want to come back to the question I'm going to ask you, but I also really want to hear from Frank Figluzzi and from Barbara about this. The, the fundamental question still about this FBI investigation, which has not, to my mind, been satisfied. Forget about even the questions. You guys have raised great questions about the scope of what the FBI is allowed to do if they're investigating questions of sexual misconduct. Here's another question. Is perjury uh, an, an issue that the FBI is allowed to be investigating? There are many people who look at Judge Kavanaugh and his testimony last week and say it looks like he lied about a wide variety of things under oath under oath in front of this committee. So is the FBI now allowed well, to investigate? John, hey, John, list, can I, can list, I, list, some of the, list some of those things. Well, certainly you, you just said he committed perjury, list them. Well, certainly there are many people who think that he lied about, you mentioned a large number, you said there were a lot of small things. Um, certainly the question of his, of, well, the question of his drinking, for instance. Uh, he has made many assertions that there are, there are witnesses now, including his roommates at, at Yale and other places, who've said that uh, he was in fact a blackout drunk uh, in college. Uh, things that he claimed in front of the committee when he was in, 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 in colloquy with, for example, Senator Klobuchar, that he denied outright. 
right about his, he said he admitted he liked beer, and he said that he occasionally drank too much, but he said that he, he tried to circumscribe that and say that his, uh, he was kind of basically your average beer right. drinking guy. Right. Um, All right. He made so pretty, drinking. He All made, right. He made pretty, some pretty strong claims there that have been contradicted by people who are named people already right. on the record right go, now. Go and there are other instances. All right. We get number one. We yeah. get number one. Go to number two. What else do you think he purged himself? Uh, well, I, 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 don't, I don't have, I don't have the, a list here, although I, I'd be happy to make one for you for a later block. But I think there are, there are questions that have been raised even earlier in the, in the confirmation hearings, Joe, about, for example, his work at the White House. Democrats have made an issue about that in the early phases of the confirmation hearing, about whether or not he had been truthful about various activities that he undertook when he was in the White House on various legal and political matters. They were gotcha. already concerned about perjury even before we got to the questions of sexual misconduct. So I, I do think there are people on the Democratic side who believe that the judge on right. matters large and small has demonstrated gotcha. uh, a looseness with the truth. And so the question to me is, right. is that an issue for the FBI or not? Let, let, let's take it to Frank, uh, and I'm only trying to move this along because yeah, yeah. Alex is screaming in my ear. Yeah. Uh, move, move it along, idiot, is what Frank, uh, my EP is saying. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Frank, i got to ask you a question. But Well, first of all, perjury. Is that something that the FBI would look into? So the answer is yes, but only if the victim of that perjury, the Congress, right, the charge would be lying to Congress, they need to be the complainant. They need to say, we want you looking into this. And I'm telling you, Joe, the FBI has not been asked to do that. All right, and Frank, one other quick question. Uh, and maybe this is just, uh, just a, a failure of character on my part. Uh, but I, I usually, uh, uh, if, if the president of the United, if I'm an FBI agent and the president of the United States says I give them free reign, uh, they can investigate whatever they want to, I'm going to blow through the doors. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I'm going to question whoever I want to question. I'm going to push. I'm going to go over every line that's out there. And then uh, when I'm called to task, I'm saying, but wait, the president of the United States said this, 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 and this. Uh, are there some FBI agents There's that may a, do that? No, here's what I'm hearing is uh, quite the opposite, which is that they have written orders that are about, uh, you know, an inch long. And the, they don't take orders by tweet. They don't take orders by press conference. They have written orders from the White House. So what the president is saying to the American public is quite different than what the White House is providing in writing to the FBI. All right, so Barbara, let's get really specific here. If you could guide the FBI agents that are investigating uh, these incidents uh, and Brett Kavanaugh's testimony, Dr. Ford's testimony, uh, what is the one area, what is the weak point of Brett Kavanaugh's case? Where would you, where would you point FBI officials and say, I really want you to, 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 to narrow in in this area and push hard? The first place I would look would be to talk to Mark Judge. He is the person that Dr. Ford puts in the room. I would want to know what he has to say and lock him into that story. But to Frank's point, what's so important is to not just talk to him, but then to talk to leads. Who else did he talk to about this incident? Who else was there? Uh, you know, there's talk about a, a, a former girlfriend. Did he make statements to anyone else about this? In the past month, has he talked to Brett Kavanaugh or others about what his story would be if questioned for the F by the FBI? So um, I would push there. But what's important is you don't just talk to him. You talk to those around him to find out if what he's telling you is truthful. All right. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you, Frank. We greatly appreciate you being with us. And Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.